Our dear fans, uh, friends and uh, subscribers, uh, welcome back to this uh, Cricket Happening Show today. And on this Cricket Happening Show, uh, I have a lot of cricket for you. But, uh, well, I'm definitely going to begin uh, this Cricket Happening Show. Well, also, before I start my Cricket Happening Show, uh, I will have to tell you, dear fans, subscribers, uh, I, I'm, I'm having some problems with my uh, throat, my ear. Uh, I have. I mean, uh, I've always been telling you, so, you know, there is no more time. I mean, I don't think I should be telling that again, that cricket is very dear to me. Uh, whatever be the case, uh, I'm always there to entertain you all on this cricket show, despite my ill health. Well, dear fans, friends, and subscribers, uh, as far as uh, today, so please bear with me as, as far as my, uh, my sound is concerned on this cricket happening show. Uh, it's just that I'm straining myself to do this cricket show uh, because, as you know, you guys are so cooperative and you have been uh, contributing a lot to this cricket show. So, well, uh, just starting off uh, this cricket happening show, it is going to really start off with some exciting news which happened yesterday. And as I said, Bangladesh are on a victory roll right now in the One Day International Series as yesterday. They scared South Africa in their wake uh, of this uh, very, very wonderful 2015 that they are having uh, right, uh, right uh, starting from the World Cup. Uh, they have been really buzzing uh, with confidence and that's what they precisely did at yesterday. And what a victory that was. I mean, uh, just with one wicket, um, uh, one wicket going and Soumya Sarkar, as I said, he's announced this, um, uh, he's announced this name on the international circuit and I'm sure Bangladesh and the world is going to hear a lot about this very young and talented uh, player from Bangladesh, Soumya Sarkar. When he plays his strokes, uh, it's like sweet music to the ears because he has some silken grace too. And yesterday, what unfo very unfortunately, I thought he truly deserved a century. Look at that uh, knock of uh, Soumya Sarkar, uh, in fact taking them to victory. Uh, with 90 runs of 75 balls, with 13 fours and 1 six. He played some delectable um, strokes on that. He also got some innovation when he played that periscope stroke over the wicket keeper. Uh, Tommy McBall and both of them absolutely shut out South Africa uh, from this uh, particular match by putting on a stand of 154 runs for the first wicket, which was a record, and that they put, and, and they put that stand uh, in 25 overs. With Tommy McBall's contribution, an unbeaten 61 of 77 balls with 7 fours to nurse his team to victory. But as I said, Bangladesh totally shut South Africa off, uh, like actually uh, closing the uh, tap of the, uh, closing a water tap. Uh, Soumya Sarkar, 90 of 75 balls with 13 fours and 1 six. Uh, already announced his arrival on the international scene, Soumya Sarkar. We are going to hear a lot about this guy. And he truly, truly deserves a century. But Soumya Sarkar, we all know that uh, he's going to be um, uh, making more centuries. We are going to hear the day when he makes his maiden century. And, uh, well, Soumya Sarkar, what to say? I mean, he was named the player of the match. He was also named the player of the series. And, as I said, uh, a precocious talent uh, in the making now for Bangladesh. Now, Soumya Sarkar, 90. Litton Das not out on five. And South Africa totally shut out. In fact, they lost the one-day series 2-1, uh, and Bangladesh would still be proud about it, even though they hit a second-string South African team, one could say. Because the reason being, there was no Dale Steen, there was no Moni Markle played yesterday, but he was taken to the cleaners. Uh, there was no Dale Steen, uh, there was no um, Vernon Philander, and we all know that they all make a great difference, and especially A.B. De Villiers was not there. So you know how, how, what a great difference they make, but still, I think Bangladesh should be credited as now uh, they have scalped uh, South Africa as the fourth victim in 2015 in one-day international series and they are on a victory run as far as one-day series is concerned. First, they, uh, they knocked off Zimbabwe, uh, then they went on to um, beat Pakistan, which was a record which they have never done when they did a clean sweep of Pakistan. And then uh, they also defeated India for the first time in a one-day series. And now South Africa, for sure, this is the first time that they have, de uh, they have defeated. And, uh, and um, Bangladesh have already into a victory role. And they have been breaking records too. And I think now uh, Bangladesh is some, uh, some team 
which every opposition in the world uh, has to be very, very about. Let's have a look at the bowling figures uh, from the Bangladesh bowlers. In fact, Swamya Sarkar was the uh, aggressive self. He played in a very, very aggressive manner. Um, and Tommy McBall, normally an aggressive player, uh, was uh, really playing second fiddle there. Uh, with Swamya Sarkar um, really unveiling strokes of rare beauty there. Um, a little and does, and it's very good to see he's very tall, uh, and it's very good to see the way he actually plays his strokes. Um, Kyle Abbott, 5 overs for 27. Uh, Kagiso Rabada, 6 overs for 41. Morning Market, 5 overs for 36. Imran Tahir, 1 for 37. Dubini, 4 overs, none for 24. As I said, Somya Sarkar of Bangladesh was named the player of the match, and also he was named the player of the series. So that series is over. So Bangladesh South Africa series. Uh, is all done as far as the one day international series is concerned uh, <coughs> sorry now uh, I'm going to look at the second ODI uh, Sri Lanka uh, versus um, uh, Sri Lanka versus Pakistan as I said Sri Lanka yesterday leveled the season and I, when I left you on this cricket happening show uh, I mentioned that it was very essential that that the man who was playing at the moment when I was um, actually giving you the cricket happening show yesterday was Dinesh Chandimal and I very well said that this guy has to stay and precisely that happened so that is a refreshing news for Sri Lanka that Dinesh Chandimal is slowly getting into gear here as he was the one who was there till the victory run was made there was a mature knock from him he only made 48 unbeaten runs of 63 balls with 3 fours but the support came uh, from Patirana they still have a long way to go but uh, Patirana was making his uh, debut yesterday and what a debut for Patirana uh, in fact, uh, he picked up two wickets, as you know, uh, with his left left arm spin, and he also showed us uh, that uh, what a good batsman he can be lower down the order, as he hit a six and four boundaries uh, in a knock of 33 of 28 deliveries with four fours, and he was the one who really, really gave some momentum to the innings in the latter part of the innings, and then finally Tisra Pereira um, uh, failed with only 15, but uh, there was nothing to worry as Dinesh Chandimal uh, was there, cool as a cucumber to guide them through and uh, Sri Lanka have now leveled the five match series at 1-1. Let's have a look at the bowling and Kushal Pereira. So uh, I'm sure this guy Patirana uh, is going to be uh, um, definitely destined for greater things because he's already shown um, that he is capable first with the ball and then with the bat. So I think he's a very useful all-rounder and they also have Milinda Sri Vardhana who is also a left-arm spinning all-rounder. Uh, Mohamed Irfan uh, 10 was 1 for 61 was clattered by Kushal Pereira. As you know, Kushal Pereira hit the second fastest 50, as I said, and he was rightly named man of the match. Ratali uh, was clobbered. 9.1 overs, no maiden, 3 for 73. Mohamed Afis, 10 overs, 261. 7 overs, 1 for 33 for Anwar Ali. Yasir Shah, 10 overs, went for 51. 2 overs for 7 for Shahid Malik. 5 match series level 1 1. Kushal Pereira, player of the series. So that is as far as that match is concerned. So Sri Lanka have leveled the series and now the next three one day international matches are going to become pretty exciting now before i uh, go on to i will be coming on to that match uh, which is right now happening today is the uh, first day um, of the uh, second test match between australia and england investor cash sister series uh, i will I, I, i'm just going to give you the score australia are in the driver's seat right now uh, they are doing a wonderful job uh, they are absolutely on the driver's seat uh, because um, australia right now uh, are 205 for one uh, after batting first they won the toss and elected to bat here uh, we had uh, Neville making his debut as Brad Haddon decided uh, was dropped and Peter Neville of Australia uh, was the one who made his uh, debut uh, in test matches uh, he was um, uh, he, I mean so he's the one who has made his debut he's a youngster Peter Neville the wicket keeper uh, from Australia is a new wicket keeper and also um, there was no place for uh, Watson uh, and Mitchell Marsh uh, took his place. So that was the changes. But Australia on a, on a uh, doing very well here. David Warner uh, was the only victim to go. Uh, he hit. A, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say a very convincing 38 because Chris Rogers was the one who was playing very well. Uh, he was the one who was the attacking self in sense. He was the one who was playing those attacking strokes. And right now, when I'm talking to you, Chris Rogers uh, is not out on 87. Uh, with 14 hit boundaries, so you definitely know that Rogers, Rogers, Chris Rogers has been the one who has been playing all the strokes today. But the opening partnership yielded 78, and in that the share of Warner was 38. But then Warner uh, finally probably underestimated uh, Moin Ali, and he was caught by Anderson of Bold Ali for 38 with seven boundaries. There was only wicket to go, 
and uh, England have been made to toil today. Chris Rogers is on the verge of his century, not out on 87. Stephen Smith uh, has given him admirable company, and I'm sure uh, he wants to silence the uh, critics uh, because, uh, I mean, the England said that uh, he has a, a probably a flaw where he actually moves across uh, the stumps and they were uh, bowling a bit wide. But today I think um, Stephen Smith is pretty smart for it. Uh, he has learned his lessons. Uh, he has uh, come up uh, uh, trumps, I would say. He has really, really uh, recognized the fact that uh, he needs to improve. And that's what he precisely is. And that is the mark of a great batsman. And Stephen Smith, the talented batsman right now, is not out on 70. And this partnership uh, is really, really uh, um, going along at a very, very steady pace right now. Um, it is almost 128 runs that they've added for the second wicket. So Australia has the driver's seat right now, 205 for one. The bowling has been uh, a bit, uh, bowling has not been so good. One probably thought at the, in the at Lords uh, that the, uh, the English pace bowlers would be able to make uh, something out of it, but unfortunately not. Anderson, 30 knows 341 none. Uh, and, uh, and we are in the third session right now. Uh, brought 10.3 overs, two maidens is, is right now uh, un, uh, in charge of the bowling operations. 11.1 overs, two maidens, 26 runs on no wicket. Um, uh, Mark Wood bowled 12 overs, three maidens, none for 42. Moin Ali, one for 49. Stokes bowled 10 overs for 30. Uh, Joe Root was also tried, three overs, none for 12. And Adam Lith bowled uh, over, uh, which was uh, made an over. Now, uh, so this is as far as Australia right now, but uh, I'm going to take you down to, I'm, I'm going to talk about one match. And the reason that I'm talking about this match is this is a big upset. Uh, we all know Ireland, uh, who are a very, very top associate nation. Uh, and in the, as you know, the ICC World 2020 qualifiers are going on. Uh, I, I mean, yesterday there was a match played between Ireland versus Papua New Guinea. And do you know the result? The result was that this was, the, uh, this was Papua New Guinea actually upsetting the apple cart of Ireland uh, by two wickets and the hero was a man called Vanua, Norman Vanua, he is actually an all-rounder, uh, he is a pace bowler and he came lower in the order, in fact uh, it was looking like uh, uh, looking a very very tight situation if you look at it, because Ireland were the ones, and, and, and uh, I will also tell you, I am talking about the ICC World 2020 qualifiers which are going on and uh, this is going to determine the six, six nations uh, which are going to qualify for the ICC World uh, t uh, 2020 in 2016 going to be played in India. So right now, so Australia uh, Ireland made 123 for 9 of their 20 overs uh, with um, uh, William Porterfield uh, was the one, the captain, uh, was the one who had to hold the innings uh, and he was the one who was not out on 57 or 58 balls with 4 fours and 1 six. Other than that, the, the famed batting line from Ireland totally faltered against the uh, bowling of the Papua New Guineans as Niall O'Brien was out for nine, Peter Sterling was out for one, Kevin O'Brien made only four, Balbirni was dismissed for six, Wilson was out for ten, Thompson for six, Mooney for five, Dockrell for eight, and Kane for two, Cusack was not out on thirteen, and it was a wonderful bowling performance first by the Papua New Guinean bowlers, as Nu bowled four overs, one for twenty-four, Vanua, uh, he was the hero, First with the ball and then with the bat. Four overs no made in one for 22. Gavera four overs no made in three for 17. One for 26 for JB Reva. Uh, I'm not going to go into much of those. Walla bowled two overs for 13. But this guy was the hero uh, as Norman Vanua completely transformed. In fact, if you look at the Papua New Guinea score, uh, chasing 123 set by Ireland, uh, at one stage uh, the, the score read 93 for 8 in the 17th over. So they required another 30 runs. To actually win the match and what a finish Vanuva gave. In one particular over he went on to hit John Mooney for two sixes and that was a winning six. In fact he hit three sixes. The first six was hit of Kevin O'Brien in the previous over and then he blasted uh, Mooney uh, over the stands for two glorious sixes uh, to bring an end to this match and Papua New Guinea causing the biggest upset of the ICC World 2020 qualifiers here in 2015 when they defeated the Irishmen uh, by uh, they defeated them uh, by two wickets. Uh, what a knock from Vanuva. He was an, he's an all-rounder as I said. He's a pace bowler and he finished on an unbeaten 28 of 12 of just 10 deliveries with four sixes. What a knock from Norman Vanuva. 
Are we going to hear more about this bloke, Norman Vanua? As Norman Vanua, not out on 28, of just 10 deliveries, he hit four sixes to finish off the match for the Papua New Guineans. Uh, and uh, let's have a look at the Papua New Guinea scoreboard here. Tony Uda, who is another talented uh, youngster from uh, Papua New Guinea, he made six of four balls of one four. Siaka is another good batsman, he could contribute only seven. Wala made uh, 32, he was the highest scorer of 32 balls of five fours. Pala made 19, uh, and then Dai seven, Amini six. Uh, Ware 5, Reva 2, but Norman Vanua was the one who transformed. Probably Ireland never expected this to happen because at 93 for 8, probably they thought now that it's all left to the tailenders and probably Ireland could actually uh, win this match because if you look at the equation, the equation uh, was, uh, the equation was they had three overs in which to get 30 runs and look at what Vanua did. Uh, he went on in two overs flat, just in 12 balls, he completed uh, the whole story for Papua New Guinea by slamming an unbeaten 28 with just 10 balls uh, and that too with four sixes. Now, one, I mean, I'm sure Vanua was the man of the match because uh, such a wonderful performance from Norman Vanua. And uh, let's have a look at this um, uh, Irish uh, bowling here as to what they did here. Irish bowling, the Irish bowling was Kane 3 of 3 for 19, Cusack 4 of 1 for 27. Mooney, as I said, got some tap, 3.5 was no made in 2.38. Thompson, none for 15. Kevin O'Brien was 2 for 11. Doctor, none for 9. And Norman Vanuva of Papua New Guinea was the man of the match for this upsetting victory over the Irishman. And Ireland, as I said, uh, would have been absolutely flummoxed here uh, after that Norman Vanuva um, uh, blast that happened. Four sixes in the knock of 28 unbeaten runs of just 10 deliveries, taking the match away from Ireland. And, and I would say congratulations to Papua New Guinea for, um, for putting up such a brilliant performance here uh, in, this, uh, in this ICC World Qualifier T20 2015. Will Papua New Guinea uh, make it to the, um, make it to the uh, real ICC World T20 2016 in India? Well, probably early days, but uh, well, Papua New Guinea is showing some real promise. They have some good batsmen. We have seen in the top of the order. Tony Ura is the captain of the team, and he has um, done some. Uh, he has, I mean, he has uh, scored some, uh, played some very good innings in the um, Associate Nations matches, as I, as I would remember. Uh, and I think this uh, Papua New Guinea is looking a very, very good blend. Well, tomorrow there is one match which is starting, and that is going to be the. As you know, India cleans up Zimbabwe uh, 3 0, and tomorrow uh, it is going to be the turn for two T20s that India is going to play against Zimbabwe. And Zimbabwe will be hoping that at least they would be in a position to at least uh, beat India or probably get at least, uh, I mean, uh, at least beat India in the T20s. And that is going to be uh, another interesting um, uh, T20 series coming up between Zimbabwe and India. That's going to be tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be the first match of the T20 between India and Zimbabwe. Well, I'm talking to you here. Chris Rogers has just uh, inched his way on to 88 now. Stephen Smith has moved his score on to 77. And Australia, as I said, are doing pretty well here. They are 213 for 1. There is still a long way to go. We still have um, uh, pr uh, probably 27 to 30 overs uh, still left in, the, in this particular day at Lords in the second test match. Well, dear fans and subscribers, uh, that's, uh, that, that's going to bring an end uh, to this cricket show of mine. Hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did. As I said, my voice box was a bit uh, hoarse, uh, but uh, I did my best here. But I don't know, cricket is something that really, really invigorates me. Uh, even though, uh, you know, whatever be the strain, uh, it brings the best out in me. When uh, Even though I'm, I'm not really, really uh, fully fit here, uh, I think cricket is something which really excites me. Uh, it gives me, because I do it with a lot of passion, uh, cricket is a great passion of mine and when I do it I feel invigorated and uh, really really it boosts me uh, to no end. Uh, so I'm really really glad uh, that this Cricket Happening show has gone off well. Uh, thanks to all your support dear friends and subscribers uh, and um, I'm hoping to see you all tomorrow uh, on a Friday with my Cricket Happening show which will be talking about the Australia versus England uh, second test match uh, of the Ashes series and also we look at the first T20 between Zimbabwe and India. Well, dear fans, friends and subscribers, uh, with a congratulations to Bangladesh and congratulations to Papua New Guinea for upsetting Ireland 
This is your host Ram ending the cricket show for today. Thank you.